So we've seen that while Kekulé was on the right track, he missed the essential idea about benzene that there's massive electron delocalization occurring in this molecule. This makes the molecule a wonderful candidate for a treatment using resonance structures and molecular orbital theory. And this was one of the great early successes of molecular orbital theory, that it could be used to predict the electronic structure of benzene in great detail and with great accuracy. In talking about the currently accepted and currently understood structure of benzene, I think it helps a lot to break the molecule down into its sigma system and its pi system. Looking just at the sigma system, we recognize the molecule as a whole is planar and every carbon having sp2 hybridization. So the sigma system is actually relatively straightforward. All six carbons that I've highlighted in blue have sp2 hybridization and they're all trigonal planar. And this makes the molecule planar as a whole. Where things get interesting is in the structure of the pi system. There are two possible arrangements of the pi bonds in benzene and neither is really adequate to describe the true nature of the pi system. These are resonance structures, and we can show their interconversion through cyclic electron flow like this. The true structure of the benzene molecule is best captured by its resonance hybrid. And from the resonance hybrid, we can conclude that the bond order of the CC linkages is 1.5, that all six carbons are equivalent, and that all carbon-carbon bonds are equivalent to each other. This resonance picture, and especially the resonance hybrid, helps us see why benzene doesn't really behave like an alkene. It's not accurate, really, to think about the pi electrons in benzene sitting in three isolated double bonds. Instead, it's better to think about those pi electrons as delocalized over all six carbons within the molecule. That delocalization gives the electrons greater stability and makes them resistant to, for example, electrophilic addition reactions. Such addition reactions would destroy some of the conjugated cyclic pi system within benzene. For example, if Br2 added across the atoms of benzene, we'd end up with a structure like this, which isn't fully conjugated, since these carbons to which bromine has added are now sp3 hybridized. An examination of the molecular orbitals of benzene shows us that they look very different from the molecular orbitals of even an acyclic conjugated polyene like hexatriene. The benzene molecule has six pi electrons, two for each of its pi bonds. And filling these into this molecular orbital energy diagram, we see that the three bonding molecular orbitals are filled. The non-bonding or atomic 2p level is here indicated by the dotted line. And the three anti-bonding molecular orbitals are empty. This is typical of aromatic pi systems. All the bonding levels are filled and all the anti-bonding levels are empty. The pi molecular orbitals are still composed of p orbitals, but now because they overlap in a cyclic manner, we get a different pattern. It's not simply levels going up. We have what's called degeneracy, with multiple levels or multiple orbitals having the same energy. But if we focus on the number of nodes in each structure, we can start to recognize a familiar pattern in the shapes of these molecular orbitals. The lowest energy orbital has no nodes. All of the p orbitals are overlapping in a constructive fashion. The next two levels, higher in energy, have two nodes, two locations where the wave function changes sign, and we have destructive interference. Since both of these orbitals have two nodes, we find them at the same energy. In the antibonding level, we find four nodes within these orbitals. And there are two ways, as it turns out, to place these nodes within the orbitals, which is why we end up with two degenerate levels. Finally, the highest energy orbital of benzene contains six nodes, as each pair of adjacent p orbitals has opposite phasing and displays destructive orbital overlap. And so in the pi molecular orbitals of benzene, we recognize this familiar pattern that as we go from lower orbital energy to higher orbital energy, the number of nodes is increasing. The cyclic nature of the pi system results in degeneracy of certain levels, that is, orbital energy levels at equal energies. We see that for the two groups of levels in the middle with two nodes on the bonding side and four nodes on the anti-bonding side. One reason for the greater stability of benzene relative to something like hexatriene is that these degenerate two-node levels are collectively lower in energy than the filled levels that correspond in something like hexatriene, where these would be stacked on top of one another. One would be higher in energy than the other. In benzene, because there are two ways to put two nodes within a molecular orbital, both of these end up at the same energy and collectively at a lower energy than the corresponding orbitals in hexatriene. 
In a later video, we'll learn how to construct orbital energy diagrams like this for any aromatic hydrocarbon. It's not as complicated as it sounds, as long as we don't worry too much about the shapes. We're going to use similar arguments to the one we just made about hexatriene to rationalize why certain types of cyclic conjugated hydrocarbons are relatively stable, or aromatic, and certain types are relatively unstable. They're what are called anti-aromatic. So thinking about the molecular orbitals here does provide useful information, as it allows us to reason through to the stability of a cyclic conjugated system and get to a deeper definition of aromaticity, one that goes beyond just alternating single and double bonds.